they don't have James Brown introduce me. Where's my music? <laughs> What's up, white people? <laughs> oh, and, and Derek, Derek, where are you? <laughs> my name is Kevin Jackson. I'm executive director of the Black Sphere and also seeking educational excellence. And I was born to end identity politics. That is my mission today. So I'm happy to be amongst you nationalists, and in my short amount of time today, I'm going to enlighten you and help you learn how to problem solve. And uh, it's getting a little bit more difficult to do here in Denver because of all the pot. I almost got a contact high walking over here from my hotel, and one of my buddies says, Colorado, Kevin, that's where the cows eat pot, thus making the stakes higher. <laughs> anyway, let's talk leftism for a bit. I looked up the definition of leftism, and here's what it says in the dictionary. You can Google this if you want. Leftists are the people who care more about losing their cell phones than losing their kids. Now, I don't say that for the laughs or even to get a rise out of leftists. I say it because it's true. Did you see the story about a man who left his kid in a car in Arizona? This happened just the other day, and the kid died. So a leftist came up with a bright idea this great idea of how to prevent that from ever happening again. And he says, hey, put something of value in the back seat so you don't forget the kid. Some of those are going to get that when they're on their way home. See, your kids are valuable. You don't have to put something in the back seat to think about your kids. But that is the forward progressive thinking of the left, is that if you put your briefcase back there, maybe little Johnny will survive. Anyway, my lesson today, folks, is that all politics is identity politics in this country and around the world. So consider everything that I tell you today about leftists is tough love. And why can I dish out the tough love? It's because I am a free range Negro. <laughs> Unrestrained in my pursuit of happiness per the Declaration of Independence. By the way, <laughs> As a little reminder for the uh, con uh, conserv Western Conservative Summit, it's not a good idea to put Oreos in my swag bag. <laughs> I thought I'd have a Starbucks card as well. The opposite of a free-range Negro, folks, is a plantation Negro. Free feel free to call them plantation Americans because they love to hyphenate. So with your kind indulgence, I will explain the life of a free-range Negro. Now, you see, this morning, I felt like having lox and bagels, yet I'm no more Jewish than Muhammad. Lox and bagels is a choice that a free-range Negro can make. And in fact, later tonight, I was thinking of having kimchi without repercussion. A plantation Negro must check the manual to see if eating non-black-centric food is authorized. Now, the life of a free-range Negro still has its challenges as the left hates the free-range Negro, because free-range Negroes like me and Derek, have a superpower. My superpower was forged from the DNA of slaves and Democrat-oppressed blacks of the past. And in fact, I sent my DNA to Ancestry.com and the report read back to me, damn it, man, you're 100% American. <laughs> See, I possess a superpower. It's called common sense. And that's where I'm going to help you white folks out, because you are confused, like the white person who got hired at the Black History Museum. Not quite sure if you should celebrate that just yet, you know, because of the daily reminders of how your ancestors oppressed my people. Well, while you consider that conundrum, rather, let me tell you a story that happened recently to me, and a friend of mine asked me this question. She says, Kevin, is it okay to say black when referring to black people? And you know the PC term is African-American which, of course, there's no such thing, because even Africans who come to America don't call themselves African-Americans. They come here to become Americans. That is the very reason they left Africa. <laughs> but apparently, <laughs> apparently, leftist white folks have too much idle time and too much of your money, so they think of these crazy things. And they think up the nonsense of, why are we calling black people black? Isn't that offensive? These idiots call black people who have never been to Africa African-Americans. They call black people who wouldn't move to Africa if you put a gun to their heads African-Americans. 
that ranks up with calling whether global climate change or threatening to jail people for misgendering a transsexual. Screw that. If you dress like a woman and you look like a man, you're a dude to me. I like to think that I'm rich, but when I shop, I've never been misbank accounted. My credit card has been rejected at the finest stores, and I just smile and say, try this one. <laughs> Speaking of gender, have you heard of the term cisgender? It means that you accept the gender that you were born with. I actually had to look this up. I didn't know what it was. You accept being designated a male or a female versus you not accepting one of those two. For example, I am happily male, the father of four sons, all boys, by the way. <laughs> and for being born male and declaring myself cisgender, leftists believe I must suffer. Thus, I suffer from this thing called toxic masculinity and epitomize rape culture. Now, in considering what leftists think of my toxic masculinity with a rape culture chaser, I'm reminded of the classic line from Blazing Saddles, where the white women at? <laughs> I'm proudly masculine. It reeks in me. Some of you ladies are in danger of being pregnant just from listening to me right now. <laughs> Leftism infects the mind with mental gonorrhea and not that old school strain, the new one today they can't get rid of. But luckily, I get to offset my evil maleness due to America's white guilt. And why is America guilty? Because of white nationalism, silly. You know what white America is. You know how white it is, right? In the 2010 census, it was reported that America was 72% white. Now, that included Arabs, Asians, and Hispanics. Now, remember how George I Look Mexican Zimmerman suddenly became a white Hispanic after shooting Trayvon Martin? Because America wasn't ready to hear that a Latino man killed a black man. Leftists consistently question America's whiteness, but they never seem to question other countries' homogeneity. The most homogeneous countries in the world are African, Middle Eastern, South, and Central American. By the way, they're afraid of the browning. They say we're afraid of the browning of America, but nobody ever questions the whitening of Africa. We live in a world where we legislate based on the way people have sex. The freakier your sexual habits, the more money the government gives you. If you are a transsexual pygmy iguana lover, there is a reparations package for you. Yeah. Now, speaking of reparations, by the way, I'm going to get a couple more minutes on, out of this. <laughs> The best reparation you can have for any leftist ailment is to be born American. You know, the America that gave us the first recognizable half-black president, the America that indulges multi-millionaire black idiots who protest the flag, the anthem, and hate the very country that made them rich beyond belief. Black ancestors built a country they could never imagine for themselves, and today, black leftists squander it. But leftists no longer limit the indulging the ignorance of blacks. Now they go after all people, particularly the youngsters. Instead of protecting our kids from everything, we're supposed to be preparing them for everything. But sadly, today, far too many people believe that they can prepare their children for the, for the real world by protecting them. So how about the millennials and these General Z, Gen, Generation Z kids? They did a study back in the 1960s and compared those kids to today, and today's Generation Zs are emotional wrecks, they're basket cases, they can't handle the real world, college is little more than a Montessori, and it doesn't prepare these kids for the real world. They leave college with an emotional IQ of a four-year-old. So we fight for the soul of this country, folks, as we lose it every day in academia. You can count the number of conservative colleges in this country on your hands and feet, feet, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ms. Pickens, <laughs> with, with digits to spare. Remember when college was balanced, when the left didn't have such a grip on academia? It was decades ago, and we watched it happen. So now everything triggers them. They complain about cultural appropriation and, and everything else. They complain of white guilt, white privilege, complete racist con con conceptions to begin with. Students claim they need safe spaces to protect themselves from what? and cry closets. From what? They need laugh closets so we don't have to look at them laughing our faces. 
They talk of society's injustices as they themselves are the reason for almost every injustice to man. Look, I make no statement about who to support in 2020. I happen to support President Trump. I figure you know that. (laughs) But when you call a billionaire who graduated from Wharton stupid and a guy who needed to borrow cab fare in 2004 to get home from the Democratic Convention and put his grades on lockdown smart, then I think you have a warped sense of the real world. So let me end here, because I've already taken up my time and I'm on reparation time. (laughs) If you're tired of the social justice agenda, join SeekingEducationalExcellence.org. We are taking a judicial watch approach and suing academia for the stupid things like segregated this or that. If you're tired of having your First Amendment rights stolen, join TeaPartyCommunity.org and listen to me on KJRadio.com. Finally, conservative America represents this country, not leftists, not metrosexual girly men or their crack addict vagina hat wearing lesbian counterparts. <laughs> These groups will never replace real men. And there is no woman on the left who truly represents the beauty of a conservative woman. So as you, yeah, give yourselves a hand. So as you consider your white privilege, consider the hardship of your forefathers who came to the new world fraught with dangers, they faced every challenge. And 243 years later, the greatest nation in the world continues to flourish despite leftism. Our forefathers foresaw one unhyphenated America. So thank you and God bless you. (laughs) Quick point, quick point. They're going to show a trailer to a movie they, that we did to, to celebrate police officers in America called Bleeding Blue. And our next movie will be coming out next year. It's called Maga the Movie. And the catchphrase is, this movie's going to be huge and Mexico's going to pay for it. 